Good evening, welcome to our show, and let me introduce the panel for you tonight. Over here, a good friend who's been with us many times, Susan Nestridge. She is a USA law professor, a commentator for Fox News. Her book, Sex and Power. That was going to be about Gary Condit. Well, <laughs> <laughs> luckiest man in America. Too late. Uh, over right. here is an international attorney who's written extensively about the subject of terrorism in the Middle East. This is Mr. Ayez Sheikh. Uh, over here, of course, we have the producer of Once and Again on ABC, Fridays at 10, and his film, I Am Sam, will be released in December. And we want to talk about his film of a few years ago, The Siege, Ed Zwick. And to his uh, left there is uh, a good friend also of our show, many times with us, uh, his book, The Coming Collision. He is a professor at Trinity Law School, James Hurston. There's The Coming Collision. Okay, first thing I wanted to... Uh, yeah. <coughs> get to tonight is uh, everyone has been asking that question why do they hate us and I read something which I thought was the best thing I've read so far about that it was in the LA Weekly a free paper See? <laughs> you get you must all get the LA Weekly out here a guy named John Perez wrote they hate us because we don't even know why they hate us and it I think that's so true they hate us because we don't even know why they hate us, and it made me think, uh, and they probably get hung for this analogy, but sort of like the, uh, you know, the guy, the husband who doesn't know that his wife is about to leave him, has no clue, he gets home one day, and it's like, I thought there was no problem. And she's like, I've been telling you this for five years, you don't listen to me. And it, what do you mean? I, I, you never said anything. No, I was trying to get your attention. Well, well... You go first. <laughs> <laughs> I think what, what that statement means is we have no sense of history. I mean, we, we, we in this country and a lot of other countries took um, crayons and dro uh, divided up the Middle East in the Sykes-Picot Agreement for the sake of our own purposes. And we have, uh, you know, created, supported uh, some, some monarchies legitimate and others not for the sake of our own ends. Particularly How can monarchies be legitimate at all in this in well, the modern world? because we don't make those choices for other people. But, but the, what troubles me about that statement, and, and it's clever, I mean, it says that our ignorance was bliss and we weren't paying attention, and I wish it were so easy because we'd all learn about them right away, right? We would all agree to go right to the library and if they would stop hating us, if we'd read some books, we'd read some books and then we would not be ignorant anymore. Unfortunately, oh, I you know, I don't think it works quite like that. And I mean, Golda Meir's great line, which comes back to me, and you may not like this one, was she said there won't be peace in the Middle East until they start loving their children more than they hate ours. You know, I have a little uh, different take on yeah. this. I, I think that we're looking at an area, as you mentioned, monarchies, totalitarian regimes. And to keep their power, it's to their advantage to propagandize. And to distract. And to distract. From the real problem. Absolutely. Which and, is them. And what they need to do is to distract from the misery of their people. Right. And we are like this shining beacon of light that is an allure that draws. Millions of Muslims have come to this country, for yeah. example. And they are despots, and despots all through history have done this. Um, they seek a scapegoat. I mean, Hitler had the scapegoat of the Jews. Stalin had the capitalists. And they ha they're using the scapegoat of the Western civilization. And with, if there were no Israel, if yeah. our foreign policy was different, they would still hate us. I have to agree with that. I think we have to draw a distinction between the terrorism we see today and that we've seen in the past. I think that the question is right on why they hate us because it really ultimately is about that. This is not terrorism aimed at any particular policy, but really I think at our very existence and in particular our presence in the Persian Gulf. And I mean that not just militarily, but I think uh, politically, economically, and culturally uh, bin Laden and his brigands would like to extricate ourselves from the entire Arab world. And in that sense, I think they're fighting ultimately a rare guard action, a violent rare guard action against history, against reality, um, against not just the present, but the future. And I think that's ultimately why they will end up losing. But I, I, I guess what I, I'm asking about us, and you're answering about them, which right. is the safe answer. I understand. Well, we have it's more safe to say we, they're bad. We know we they're bad. I mean, we, we, look, well, we know they're bad and well, we're good. But I'm still but, asking. But, but the question Did, about us, what is... He makes a movie three years ago, which almost, note for note, 
other than the airplanes. You had explosions instead of airplanes. The siege, yes. The siege. And what does everybody say of him? They say, he's a racist. Why did he make the bad guys Arabs? Now, I could make the case that maybe he made the bad well, guys Arabs because he knew what was going on in the world, and there was a real threat of danger from well, that we corner. all knew. We all but knew. But we didn't want to hear that. We said, okay. oh, don't go to see that movie. It's overdone. Well. Right? And it wasn't. It was, it was absolutely so, factually correct. It, 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 it was preposterous. I remember doing the issue on the show that the Arabs right. were, were saying you cannot make a it would movie Iran, about Arabs. Where, where the terrorists, it so reminded Arabs. me when they made The Godfather, when they were making The Godfather, they were protest. How dare you the imply Italians. that the mafia is Italian? Italian right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The next exactly. thing they'll be eating spaghetti. But, where were you guys three years ago? I was here defending you. He defended you. I yeah. defended you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because it was ridiculous. Because it was the height of political correctness. That's right. Right. Which I have always defined as the elevation of sensitivity right. over truth. And I know we're in sensitive times again, and that is appropriate. But let me ask again: Is there something to what this man was saying? They hate us because we don't even know why they hate us. Uh, look, we had that, a is it not infuriating look, to look, is it not infuriating yes. to them that they were with the, with attacking that. us throughout the 90s? But look at look and at we us. went back. Yes. We, we had a, we have a president about to abrogate international treaties about saying things like, "Oh, we're going to go it alone in the world." We do have an imperious manner toward the rest of the world, and I'm not just talking about you know politically. We export our culture in a, in a very sort of um, aggressive manner. We we literally. Um, are proudly this dominant force. And, and if you are dispossessed, if you are powerless, and you look at this, what is perceived to be this indulgent abomination, well, it's but that's like saying a I'm serial sure murder. Oh, no, now everybody right wants to kill. Kill. No, 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 they hated us before 93. Yeah, Why is before it that there was never a terrorist act on American continental soil before 93? They still hated us. There was another emotion there. They are afraid of us. They, were, they had a healthy fear of the United States of America. And what we have to do is restore that it's health and fear. Well, now, now we finally have. Now we have. That's not right. Wait a minute. When was the World Trade Center blown up? 1993. Right. And when we and didn't, were when that we didn't react time. to that attack or the embassy attack the way we're reacting now, I don't think, I think but, they but lost I, that healthy fear. And they should right. have, they should fear us. That's right. It is important to recognize. And now they do. But, but to go back to your question, I go back to the original, which is that, that this form, and it's, it's interesting you point out to 1993 because bin Laden and, you know, found his roots in the Afghan conflict. And ultimately he found his roots in the presence of, of uh, American soldiers on Saudi soil. And it really fundamentally which, comes down to the fact that this form of terrorism is aimed directly at our existence. It is not a terrorism that's aimed at some other particular policy interest. And that's why we see attacks on the U.S. much more so now than we did. We're the heart think, of Western civilization, of modern Western civilization, and that's what those twin towers represented to them and to uh, but the you know, terrorists. Before cells. this, when you said to an American, you know, about hate abroad, they think, oh, France. <laughs> Those, you know, the French, they are so rude. The waiters, you order in French, they answer back in English, they hate us. Oh, that's hate. <laughs> Now we I mean, know that's hate. really where we thought the epicenter of hate was for You know us. what the danger that's is true. now, though, that we've gone way too far in the other direction, though, Bill. I mean, we have never been safer in a way than we are right now. Everybody, I mean, you can't fly as an Arab out of Los Angeles without getting F-16s to bring you back. They've had three planes in the last four days return because of the crime of Arab on board. One of the guys was in a wheelchair. I mean, it's really getting very tough. And we're in danger of losing liberty for what? Okay, well, I have to take a break. I want to address that when we come back. <laughs> okay, I want to uh, address what you said, because you said the phrase Arab on board, which is, uh, uh, um, sounds like that old joke that we've heard, driving while black. Right. So you're making an analogy there. Yeah. Okay, I don't buy that analogy. Driving while black 
is unjustified, to arrest somebody for driving while black. That is not the same thing as Arab on board. So... I, can, I, can I try you one and then I'll give it up? If you are a police officer in Los Angeles, where we live, and you see a man of color, a black or Hispanic man between the ages of 18 and 30 driving a car, the chances are, according to our police chief and all the statistics, between 40 and 50 percent, that that man you're looking at has been convicted of a crime, has served in prison, on parole, or is on probation. If you are looking at an Arab sitting on an airplane, the chance that that man sitting there in a business class seat reading his book or with his two children is a member of Osama bin Laden's group of terrorists is one in 266 billion, all right? Now, granted, the danger is high, but simply because you cannot say... Well, that can't every, be a right it, It's right! <laughs> yes. 266 <laughs> billion? Probably more! Wait a second. There's a, there's a billion mu Muslims in the yes. world? And what's the chance? So it can't Close. be high... The, and this, one in a billion. Well, that went down fast. <laughs> Close enough for me. There are, and I it's not it's just one. A hundred in a billion. You're still going to stop every Arab who gets on the plane? It's not a matter of stopping every Arab. It's a matter of it's reasonable, common-sense descriptions used in law enforcement. If somebody robs a 7-Eleven and they're 5'3 and they have red hair, it's, the police will target people that fit that physical description. Right. We can't exceed the bounds of our constitution, is. though. Same well, as racial profiling. No, they're targeting black people driving cars. Profiling, legitimate law enforcement profiling. And also, September 11th, a shift took place. We are now a nation at yeah. war, and the enemy is not abroad necessarily. We have men and women in uniform in harm's way, but we're all in harm's way. And so we have to take common sense approaches, and we can't chill right. airline ticket and agents. The, well, and the consequences are a little more dire. Yes, the cops could pull over the black guy and find out that, you know, he had a record back in the 80s. Uh, it wasn't a big hit. I get it. Um, <laughs> Right, so, but this is. But these release. consequences are a little more dire than that. Well, I, I think. I think a couple of things. First, we need to draw a distinction between civil liberties and convenience, um, and I think right. that's something that we all as Americans forget. I mean, we don't have a fundamental right to not have a plane call back or to wait for one hour versus two hours at the airport. But there's another aspect of this, and I think this is the wrong question because I don't worry about so much about profiling or about repression from above, as I do about fringe elements throughout society yeah. who are going to use this to breed the politics of discord, which, which is terribly unpatriotic. Which act, and If we breed discord now, then we play into the hands of bin Laden. And, and that is what I really worry about. I think this administration, I think, I think the, the, the institutions good, of our actually, power have so been fantastic in, in terms of, yes. of, you know, it, both in terms of the president, the administration, members of Congress, and the media themselves. Right. But, but on the whole, there is still a lot of discord. And what I worry about is, is sort of these fringe elements who will use this I as an opportunity. That's what happened with Ed's film. They were breeding right. discord because that was a right. pro Arab American film. But also, a, again. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, that Ed was, was. No, but it was. It was the bad guy, you're right, the bad guys were not the Arabs. But to pretend that the Arabs, even though, of course, most, the, whatever percentage, are law abiding and deplore this, what we do, it's still the truth that the 100% of the terrorists are going to be Arabs. Arab Muslims. Right. And that is a truth we cannot but here's ignore. What and because wish what is, would go away and we were all alike, well, like, whatever our yeah, ethnic background. That's correct. Be again, careful what does art do? It holds up a mirror. You know, I didn't pluck that out of the out of the ambient right. out, out, out of my imagination in the, yeah. in the pure realm. It was right. in the ambient universe. It was looking at the world. The world is an unhappy place. The world has has things that are cruel and things in it that that are difficult to, to deal with. But that's our job. But Bill, every cop on the beat engages in racial profiling. When all those politicians, you included, were making speeches saying no racial profiling, the truth is cops were doing racial profiling. What we didn't do, however, was go out there and endorse right, it as a what's strategy. What's the middle ground? And is, well, is we're there, struggling is, is for there, the middle ground. Is there a ground. programmatic but, method by but which... But the middle ground has got to be you look at that Arab guy and you say, all right, before we return this airplane, let's find out if he's traveling with two children, if he's advantage gold, if he's got other good reasons for being on this plane. Yeah. Let us not jump to conclusions right. about Arab people and let us no, bend over that, backwards but, but that's just to unjump. 
the but conclusion. by the way, you're talking about the difference the between professional le the professional. That's right. right. And, and the what six people on the is. plane who said we heard him say something terrible. We better land. I don't blame them. If your kid is on the plane, we're yeah. all scared. But the fear right but now you've flown in is Europe getting before. out you've, of control. You've, you've, you've seen that there is a professional way to handle to this handle situation, this, and right? we're not Rather doing than a corporation it. who hires underpaid workers, and on, then the or people on train. panic, right. and we're not doing it at all. We just go back to but, the Constitution uh, and the rule of law, well, and we you know, they, and we approach it that way, and we don't have this over litigious society it, chilling you know the possibilities that of security. Historically, the airlines we have been the Constitution Susan, and the rule you know of law. That the airlines have been sued. I can't hear either one of you. They've been sued I repeatedly. Can you can hear me. You can hear her. Um, they, they've been sued me. repeatedly I, for, a, in essence, a civil suit over racial profiling. And, and the policies then do. expand, and they make it difficult for personnel to stop people that are reasonably suspicious. Here's the only point I want to make. Okay. The only point you want to make. Historically, <laughs> when we're scared, we do badly. When we are up against the wall, you talk of the Constitution and the rule of law, you look at American history and you find that every time we get scared right. of communists, of Japanese, of right. somebody else, yes. we do terribly. We give away every right we can have, and it doesn't well, But we're make not us doing free. that this time. We don't have bars. We don't have in the, in the, in the movie, what happens is that Bruce Willis is the bad I mean. guy <laughs> because he builds internment camps for Arab Americans. We're not doing that. Bush went to a mosque. What do That's we have right. to do before somebody says, okay, well, this is the Bill, right way to do it? on the head because I think... I got to take a break. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Ed, tell me what you, tell what you just told me in the break about the Cubans. That is interesting. You well, just... no, I mean, you know, in the nature, in, in the name of anti-communism, we presume to keep Cubans out of America. We don't let Iranians come into this country unless they've applied for political asylum. So it's not as if we've, you know, this government will suddenly be going to, to, to different lengths to try to apply certain measures that are, that are debated and, and, and legislated as to how to address this issue. Hmm. That's right. We do, that, that, yeah. Well, what, it, Susan mentioned history, and I think it's important to have historical perspective. Um, you know, in World War I, a very progressive Wilsonian administration turned on pacifists and German-Americans. In World War II, we had internment. What we, said to, we see today is starkly different, and I think it would be incorrect for us to draw historical generalizations where they don't exist, because today I think we see the institutions of power trying to reach out and not let that happen. So I go back to me, it's, it's not, I, I don't worry so much today about institutional repression or, or even, you know, profiling. I worry again about the fringe. I worry about those who would like to cast this but what, what, as, what? as a clash of civilizations. It those is Come on. Yeah. That's, it is, to a degree, a clash of civilizations that has been going on for a thousand years. In the, in the long view of history, our problems with communism will probably seem like a little blip on the radar. We've been fighting this battle between the West and the Muslims for almost a thousand I, I years. Disagree, Bill. As, as recently the, as oh, 1952, Dwight Eisenhower said we have to be aware of our dependence on foreign oil. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, remember this is, that. This is not a new. This is not a new issue in terms of this country, our appetite, right. and how we're trying to enforce. And that. this idea that it's only a few hundred of the Muslims in the world who thought this was a good idea to attack America, or that you know it's just a very far extremist. I'm sorry, I don't buy it. It's n everything I read tells me that's not the case. Well, that there is enormous sympathy from an enormous well of people around a vast arc of the world. Well, we've got so, to distinguish sympathy and those that right. disagree with our foreign policy with this very small, really it is a small fringe, a quantum leap of who are willing to kill themselves when Osama and is, kill thousands of people in the process. That, that is a big difference. Well, when Osama is now the second most popular right. name <laughs> behind Mohammed. Mohammed. Right? I'm my okay, in Pakistan. Which is a, in Pakistan right. no less. When so he's on the t-shirts. Right. When he's a hero, I mean, every yeah. I see all the baby you know, Osama in his tent. Right? Yeah, two so million many... dollar missile with a twenty dollar tent dealt, that, did that. I mean, that was the, the strikes two years ago. The ill-fated strikes catapulted him to cult-like status. So we've got to keep in perspective. I think what's what Jim says earlier. If, if we had reacted with strength and and, and retribution early, that may not have happened. How, how do you have a killer in cult-like status? Can I ask that? I mean, how do you give cult-like status to a man who would kill innocent women and children and men? 
Well, Hitler had one, that's David right. Koresh, right. I mean, but, lots but, but, of people. But that says it's not just 100 people. That says we've got a much larger regime. problem. And we do have a much larger problem. Right. That's yeah. what I'm trying to we're tell you. We're the great right. Satan. Remember, we're the great Satan. Uh, Saddam Hussein is intentionally starving his people. The Taliban put women and homosexuals to death. To the Taliban have yes. pulled families Leno out and we're the great years. Satan. Women in all of the Muslim world, their status is nothing like that. If that is, we're not, the a leading clash, edge of if that is not a clash of civilizations <laughs> right there, how could we ever bring our way of life to a people who will not let, uh, in many cases, women well, vote, read, become educated, work, do anything? It's against the law That's to laugh out loud. Sex. For women to laugh out loud under the Taliban is against the law. Well, well I don't get do you, but are, you really suggest, are you really suggesting that the, that the solution to that is therefore to retaliate more strongly? Do you think that that, that, that would have the, pro, the end that, 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 well, that, that you see? That's a different question for a different show. I'm sorry we run out of time again. We'll be right back. Mm.